welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Daryl Haswell from IBM. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Daryl Haswell, the Director of Product Management of Data and AI at IBM. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Daryl, hello and welcome. Hey, how are you doing? I'm glad to be here. Oh, so glad for you to be here. Thank you for joining us today. So tell me, okay, you're the Director of Product Management of Data and AI at IBM. That sounds massive. And just in case there is somebody out there who doesn't know what type of business IBM is, tell me about mm -hmm. IBM. Sure. So so one quick one before we go down that route. Um, early in my career, when interviewing uh, prospects for um coming into IBM, I would ask them, what does the IBM acronym stand for, right? Just a, just a little litmus test to see if they did a little bit of homework. About 90% of them wouldn't know the answer. Um, so IBM is International Business Machines. Um, it's a multinational uh, technology company that provides IT products, um, solutions and services just to help customers solve business problems, right? Um, so I am in the data and AI organization within IBM, and it provides clients with uh, solutions around their uh, data and artificial intelligence endeavors. And, and just the goal of that is just for clients to make good business decisions uh, with the data they have in place. Uh, so that's it. For, for, that's simple, right? From that explanation. <laughs> I love that explanation, but IBM is, it's more than that. I mean, it has such a rich history. It's over a hundred years old. Yeah, I think 113 and yeah. um, it's, it's crazy. Um, there is a presentation that I do where we list all the items that IBM has invented over the years and say, hey, who do you think invented this? Was this IBM or not? And they all end up being IBM, but it's a, it's a great exercise. Oh, fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun uh, to dive into the history of it. I have to say I have geeked out on it before. Um, uh, so, okay, so tell me, as the Director of Product Management of Data and I, um, what is it that you do? Oh, cool. So um, I do a lot of things, right? So um, so my, my role is more aligned with uh, the data and governance side within the data and AI, so on the data side, right? Uh, so I actually have responsibility for three uh, data products within IBM, right? Uh, one of them is called uh, Manta Data Lineage. Uh, it provides uh, visibility and tracking and understanding of data flows within a data landscape. Uh, another product that I uh, am responsible for is one called Data Product Hub. In short, it's just a uh, self-service uh, data product that helps you create and share data products super easy, regardless of where data lives. And then my last product is what we call uh, Master Data Management. Um, it's been around for a long time, but it, it's just uh, think of like uh, uh, entity resolution, uh, making sure there's no D dopes of name. Um, if, if, for example, if MasterCard um, has several different lines of card, a red card, blue card, black card, they want to make sure one customer is um, marketed for each one of those cards, right? So um, it's, it's, it's a fun job, super busy, uh, but uh, I love it. 
Oh, indeed. So how do you work with data in your job and working with all these data products? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, data is the lifeblood of what we do, right? I mean, um, in product management, we're really trying to constantly improve our product. Uh, we're really trying to make sure that we are um, uh, providing customer value, right? Um, so we use uh, data points within our products to, to, to solve those things I just mentioned, right? So for example, we use data to understand trends of our product. We use data to understand what features and functions customers use most. We, uh, where they spend the most time in our product. So how can we improve, like why are they spending most time in that product, right? So, so we use data to in, improve the product. We also use data to um, understand the trends in the market, right? Uh, so that we can uh, put innovations in the product. So um, with the name data and AI, you know data is the lifeblood of everything that we do, right? So we use it for almost everything at work. Oh, I love it. Um, you practice what you preach. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and we also, um, I guess, uh, drink our own champagne, right? Uh, so yeah. we use our own technology to make sure that it gives, provides the value that we need. And then we also tune that and then make that available to clients as well, too. So practice what you uh, preach and drink your own champagne. Absolutely. Oh, I love it. So, okay. So then tell me, Daryl, um, when you were very young, say like six years old, was this the dream? Did you say, I'm going to grow up and be a product manager of data and I product? <laughs> Absolutely not, right? What, um, what was the dream? Okay, so a um, couple things. I, I used to always love sports, right? So I think every kid loves sports, but that wasn't like, it was something that you wanted to do, but you know you couldn't make it. Um, but my dad was an electrical engineer. Oh. Um, he would always take apart TVs, radios, you name it, and fix them. Perfect working condition. And I was sitting right next to him, tinkering. He would open them up, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and that's where my curiosity for like um, that came from. So I thought that I was going to be an electrical engineer, but far from it now. So that, that's what I thought I was going to be when I was growing up there. Oh, well, uh, I'm sure there's gonna, there's some some uh, skills that you still carry through, <laughs> but so let's kind of explore that. So as you were growing up, you know, what did you, where did your interest start to form and land as you got into high school? And yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, very good question, right? So um, again, tinkering with my dad, I, and this, this will kind of date us here. I, I think it really, um, I really got that interest when remember when cd burners just came to market and all that right and you know I, it was so cool that i can um install those and make my own cds and then uh save my files to it and so that really got me into like a, a computer world right mm -hmm. and then uh, my senior year in high school my dad said hey you should take one of these computer science courses and i was like okay i did it um, and I, I, I've been hooked since, right? Uh, fast forward, I did my, um, I, I went to uh, uni uh, the University of North Texas where I got uh, my degree in computer science. Um, and then on my fourth year, uh, IBM hired me as an intern and 20 years later, I'm here, right? So just wow. super fast forward, right? Wow, that's that's amazing. So it's so you've been with IBM a while. Yeah, yeah again, it's it's fun. Um, it's yeah. been a blast. And yeah. IBM is one of those companies that's so huge that you can have several different roles not yeah. related to your other roles. So it feels like it, it doesn't feel like the same place, but the feature and people and culture are right. So that I've been super fortunate. So, okay, so you started as an intern. So what was what was your first uh, intern gig there? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I did not get hired for programming. I actually got hired to work in a data center, right? Oh, okay. And, um, and I, I tell people this story sometimes because um, it, it's funny. I, I feel like, I don't know if you've seen this, this old movie, um, I think it's called Slumdog Millionaire, where, where uh, every answer um he experienced in his life and he ended up winning the game show 
So every job and role that I had at IBM kind of snowballed to help me in my next career, right? So again, I started in data centers where I was uh, putting computers together. Uh, and then I learned how to do networking. And then I learned how to do storage. And then my next role was supporting uh, proof of concepts on those same systems, right? Working mm -hmm. with um, customers and clients to get those up and running. So I understood the software. Then I understood the infrastructure. And I fast forward and then uh, cloud solution architecture, uh, lead architect from that standpoint. Um, Keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, solution uh, tech sales, help, helping customers sell those same things and PLCs that I've helped create, right? And then now I've made it in um, uh, product management and data and AI, right? Again, it's just whirlwind super fast by, but it just, it just happened that way. That's very, uh, that's very interesting. So you basically just kept building skill sets. Oh, so way, absolutely. Were you, um, did you, were you, as you transitioned jobs, were you like, okay, I've mastered this and I'm looking for something else, or you just did like, you just naturally fell into the next role. It came to you or how did that, or both? Yeah, how yeah, yeah. So it, it, both, right. So let me just tell you, I, I never feel like I'm a master of anything, right? Let me just say that, right? But but I do feel like I'm experienced enough to be successful in my next role, right? So um, it just happened to be that the next role was the next trendy thing in the market. And I had experience and I, I love technology. So I kept up with it. And so I was super comfortable when I entered that role, right? And I relied on my past skills and I understood the whole environment around it and helped me be, just be successful just keep going forward, right? So it will just happen chance, and uh, but it did give me the confidence with the experience I had behind me to be successful along the way. Um, and was it just a passion to to learn the next thing, find it the is, next challenge? It is, and you, you know, you hear people say this all the time. I'm a technologist. I'm, I, you know, I love technology. I I am a a, a a geek at heart. Star Wars is one of my favorite things. I, I love and future and space and when you have that type of, um, when you like something like that, you, it just automatically fills you to, to learn more and to continue to learn more, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I've mentioned it a few times now on the podcast, you know, one of the commonalities that I'm finding in data people is just that curiosity. You mentioned yeah. it at the very beginning, just that curiosity to learn what's next, you know? <laughs> what's next, right? <laughs> or how does this work, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so tell me then, um, Daryl, what's been your uh, biggest lesson so far in your career? Wow, that's a, a good one. Uh, okay, so there's two, right? And um, one of them, I think is very important and people need to understand this, whatever, whatever job they're going into, is that I think you need to understand uh, your business or whatever business you're going into, right? Um, in product management, you're literally like, the, the CEO or GM, if you would, of your product, right? I mean, you you work with um, sales, you work with marketing, you work with development, and, and you actually dictate what comes next in your product, how customers use it. I mean, soup the nuts. So you have to understand that business, how it makes money, um, how, um, how that impacts the business, of course, and, and just how do you actually innovate against it, right? So you got to understand um, why you're doing what you're doing from a business perspective, right? So I'll say that's my number one career lesson. Just understand why you're doing what you're doing, right? Uh, from a business perspective. And then number two, what I think is super important is um, networking with others around you, right? Um, IBM, again, is it, you run across some super smart people uh, that's experienced almost anything, right? So um, IBM's culture is amazing. Everybody's willing to talk to you and help you, right? Um, there's been many people that helped me get to my next career. There's been many people that's been stuck on the same problem I've been stuck on, right? So just not being afraid to reach out and say, hey, I uh, haven't seen this before or, or, or look up a profile in the company uh, registry and say, and just chat them up and say, hey, my name is Daryl. Uh, I see that you have this title in your name. Would you would you by any chance understand what's going on here and, and people love to help you or find out 
um, <clears throat> have uh, somebody that can help you, right? So I think people uh, be out, be outgoing, right? Talk to folks. Don't be scared, right? Because you can't, you can't live in your little silo, right? Oh, such good advice. Yeah, it, it's you know another important lesson, right? It's it's you can't do it on your own. You can't. You can't. <laughs> With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DBTALKS for 20% off your purchase. <laughs> so so tell me then, uh, having worked with data for most of your career now, so what is your definition of data oh cool so um we actually have a definition of data right so it's, it's super super simple right so we think of data as some type of asset or information that can be used to ascertain an answer right mm -hmm. um it could be facts it could be figures it could be text it could be strings of course uh numbers inputs whatever right so for example uh, words put together, make up a sentence, make up a book. I mean, that was data to do that, right? It could be pixels to make whatever information to ascertain your end goal, right? Um, we actually go a, a step further and uh, we define data products, right? So what's a data product? So data product is a curated collection of data sets. It could be reports, netbooks, uh, ML models, whatever that come together and uh, satisfy a specific business need. So, uh, uh, it, and it's crazy when I tell people this concept, they're like, okay, we'll give you an example. I said, well, I'm going to give you an example you use every day, right? So, one great example of data product is, is Google Maps, right? Um, mm -hmm. It uses a collection of highway information, your average speed on roads, business types, all those different data points and, um, and asset points come together to satisfy your business need and that getting to your destination, right? So that's how we think of data products, those that work together to satisfy some type of business need, right? Mm -hmm. I love that extra layer there. Yeah, very, very cool. cool. Uh, and I love that that example. Uh, that's a very succinct uh, example of what a data product is. Um, Daryl, then... Uh, Tell me, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Wow. So um, increasing, I'll answer that. Uh, we're in a data management business, so absolutely, I think it's super important, um, especially with the rise of uh, data points that companies are, are saving every day and every year. Matter of fact, um, in, in, in I saw some stats somewhere and I don't have it memorized, but I think it said roughly about there's companies save or generate about 400 million uh, terabytes each day and just data collected. 400 million terabytes each day and about 147 zettabytes a year, right? So absolutely, we see that increasing and companies are always trying to understand, hey, I have this treasure stroll of data. How do I organize it? How do I keep it secure? How do I put governance and policies in place so that I can drive value to them and be successful? Because I already have the data. How do I make it valuable so we can, uh, our profits can go up, right? So absolutely, it's, in, it, it's increasing and it's super important, right? You know, we get questions all the time, uh, you know, why should I invest in data governance? Why should I invest in data management? You know, it, or, you know, I'm struggling to get our, our CEO to understand why this is so important. Like, do you have those conversations? With oh, your... all the time. Well, yeah. so so we usually have two types of clients that uh, come to us. One is they already know they need it. How do we do it? Right. And how, how do we differentiate into they, they come with uh, just like you, right? Like, hey, we're trying to sell the story. Uh, uh, we're not there yet. Tell us tell us why you need X, Y, Z. And what we do is we just lay it out pure and simple, right? I mean, there's big fines if you uh, fail regulatory compliance checks, right? Um, there's security breaches um, where that costs companies millions of dollars, right? 
a billions of dollars, right? So what we do is we just lay down how do we uh, provide that solution end to end from keeping your data uh, uh, governed with uh, that appear to your company's, company's policies. How do we make the right people access the data, right? And then how do we actually, um, again, make you derive insights, good business insights in your data, right? So we just lay out that story on how we do it. And then um, it talks for itself usually, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ah, I love it. Okay, so uh, what then, Daryl, what advice would you give uh, to people looking to get into a career in data management? Yeah, sure. Um, so that's a, that's a good one. I mean, you, there's so many different roles in data management. So you have to, you have to try to figure out the one that interests you, right? Um, you can be a data analyst. You can be a, uh, a data steward where you're fixing data all day. You can be a data scientist where you're actually making ML uh, or, or AI technology. Like what, what, interests you and once you find out what space that in that is understand the real world pain points and how would you go about solving that or if there's no answer maybe that will drive you to uh be in that space but just understand what kind of data roles there are because there's so many you hear the word data and, and you're like oh well you know it's 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 all the same but no right like how are you going it's just like a doctor right how are you what kind of doctor are you going to be right so so just understand the different roles in data, et cetera, et cetera, right? So simple advice. Very, very good advice. And if they're coming to interview with you, they should know what IBM stands for. <laughs> <laughs> it's a simple one. I, depending on who they were, I would still hire them, but I, I would tell them, you and, and it will stump them and they'll be like, yeah, I should have looked that one up, right? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, well. Daryl, if uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, you know, if somebody wanted to learn more about the products, um, how would they find you? Okay, so um, IBM, of course, right? You can look up IBM Data and AI, and every data a product will uh, come up. Just Google search that, right? Um, if it's one of the products that I've mentioned earlier, Data Lineage, Data Product Hub, or MDM, you would contact contact me or somebody directly on my team. But, um, you know, again, we, we uh, live for this at IBM, right? We, customer, AI is super big. Uh, customers are always trying to get insights from um, AI and how do you build that safely, right? And this is what we do. Yeah, very, very nice and, and really appreciate that. And, and I love that you mentioned, you know, try and build it safely right. because, uh, yeah, yeah. I've seen so many people or companies try to stand it up with out that safety net and just uh yeah, yeah wonder yeah. why it, it's not working <laughs> yeah, yeah so so it, it's crazy and you went here right you know one of the things that i i talk to a lot of companies about just on the ai side is a lot of them you know don't allow chat gpt yet or or models or other commercial models tools to be um used because they don't understand how those models were created right it's just a black box so one of the things that we do at IBM is we peel back that curtain and we trace with, with lineage, we trace on how those models were made and how those sentiments come out, right? So then if you are getting the answer that you're like, oh, how the hell did I get this answer? You can actually see it right there in the model. Hey, this, this, this part is making this an uh, model answer this way, tweak this, let's get that right. So that's where we, that's one of the big differentiators where we, um stand out right make uh, make just make companies feel better and uh, uh in raising their scale of, of ai right yeah and and you know i i think that's always kind of been the goal of data right being confident in your data yep where it's coming from the quality the level of quality and what it's telling you <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, uh, well, Daryl, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Yeah, thank you. Likewise, it went by fast, but thank you. <laughs> it did. Well, uh, and to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest podcasts and in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. 
Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.